Well, hey everyone, it's Hudson Henry here. I'm a Portland, Oregon based landscape and travel photographer. And we're starting to have fall hit here in Portland. That color's coming. It's my absolute favorite time of the year to get out photographing. You know, we get those beautiful colors, that beautiful blue sky, crisp air, super clean, not a lot of haze. And it's the last opportunity to really get out and capture some color before winter hits and things get gray. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I use my Hoya HD3 circular polarizer to capture the most clarity, contrast, and color that I can in camera. And then how I use On One's brand new software, Photo Raw 2019, to really quickly and easily get the finish edit that I'm after with you know, all that color, nice, crisp, natural look without overdoing it. So no matter where I'm headed or what I'm going there to photograph, I really don't leave without a circular polarizer in my camera bag. And that's doubly true when I'm going out to photograph fall color. When you think about putting on a pair of polarized sunglasses, the way that it just adds clarity and boosts color at whatever you're looking at, you can do exactly the same thing for your photography by just putting a circular polarizer on the front of your lens and then just rotating it while you look through the optical viewfinder or the electronic viewfinder or the live view display on the back of your camera and just see those colors bloom, see them pop, see the contrast added to the sky. You'll see clouds bloom out, you'll see colors get more intense, the blue sky get bluer, the reds get redder uh, in a nice natural way that you really can't emulate easily in post-production. The other added benefit is if you've got an overcast forest with wet vegetation, turning that polarizer is gonna cut through the glare on the leaves and let all the color come blooming out of that wet foliage. Uh, if you've got reflections in water, it lets you control how much the reflections are a part of your image, whether the, whether the camera's looking right through the surface to the bottom or whether it lets all that colorful reflection just bloom out. It gives you a level of control you don't have any other way. My favorite circular polarizer is the Hoya HD3. The reason is that it's extremely thin, so there's less chance of vignetting, and it cuts about two-thirds of a stop less of light than any other filters that I've used. It's also really durable, and it just does a beautiful job of polarizing. So the next thing I wanna do is just jump into the studio, look at some fall color images, and talk about how you can get even a little bit more color and clarity in a nice, natural way, simply using On One's Photo Raw 2019. All right, so back here in the studio, I've got some of my favorite fall color images from years gone by in On One's brand new Photo Raw 2019. Uh, and I want to just showcase some of the things that I do, you know, out there in the field, I'm going to use a polarizer to make that crisp fall color really, really pop. But in post-production, there's a lot I can do to get the color balanced right, make it pop even more, get that nice natural look that I want. And Photo Raw and Photo Raw's effects and local adjustments are where I really, really like to do that work. One thing I love about it is that it's got a layered, masked workflow that's all completely raw, that's non-destructive, there's no pixel mangling going on whatsoever. It's just writing little instructions on how to handle that file so that you can't really make a mistake. You can always go back to where you started. You're never actually doing anything destructive to the image. So let's jump in here. I've got a fall portrait uh, of my good friend Chelsea. I'm here in, in On One's browse portion of the software. I'm gonna jump into their editing portion, which is kind of broken into these, these main categories here. You've got uh, develop, effects, portrait, and, and local adjustments. And develop just does basic tone color, um, some noise reduction and sharpening. Effects is for really kind of fine tuning and getting that creative style that you're looking for. Portraits for working with portraits. I'm not gonna work with portrait here. I really like the way that Chelsea looks, but, and I've done a little bit of, of just tone and color adjustment to kind of tweak the tones and the colors. I wanna go into effects and I just wanna add a color enhancing filter, which is something that I'm often gonna do in fall colors. Uh, and I have a number of styles that are built into the software, just kind of canned styles. Uh, I often, you know, people think of fall. Fall kind of boosts the color more than I tend to like. I'm a huge fan of this desert uh, setting. It does wonderful things to skies, to greens, to yellows, to reds, but it's really, really natural looking. And you can always tone any of these filters that you add back or increase them with the slider right here. I really like it pretty much at full power. But one thing I'm not sure I like is what it's doing to her skin tone. So when I talk about the fact that it's masked and layered, one thing I can do is jump in here and open this mask up. That activates my masking brush. And I can say I want to paint the effect out and I want it to be a soft brush, a 100% feather. 
uh, and I want the opacity to just be 100%. And I'm going to reduce my brush size just by using the bracket keys on my keyboard. I'm just going to paint that, that warming part of that filter out of her skin. I just don't want any color tweaks to her skin tone. I liked her skin tone to be in with You can see it just paints a black area on this filter. Anything black, none of that effect comes through. And you can see now everything's changing in the image except her skin tone, and I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the thumbnail browser. We don't even have to leave the editing area. And I'm gonna jump right into this image that's a straight landscape from Central Park in New York on a beautiful fall day. I used a polarizer to bring the, the, the reflections out in this pool and really pop the colors. You know, but one thing I notice, well, there's a couple things I notice. Um, and I'll talk about them here. Again, I've gone through and done a little tone and color adjustment. Um, and uh, I do notice that it's a little bit bright. It's a little hot in the bushes on this side of the bridge, this right side of the bridge. And I think the foreground reflection could be a little bit brighter. So a little dodging and burning in local adjustments is going to come. But, but first, I just want to add a little bit of, of dynamic contrast. I love to do that to landscape images, not so much to portraits. Portraits, I don't want to do anything that, that brings out blemishes in the skin. But dynamic contrast adds a lot of sort of punch and sharpness and micro contrast to the image that just adds interest. The basic, the natural setting that, that, that's by default is a little much for me generally, so I've kind of created my own style. That's really easy to do by just adjusting these sliders to your, to your style and then saving it. And that backs the opacity down a little bit. That's a nice natural look to the foreground. But you know, once again, using this mask, I don't tend to like dynamic contrast in white puffy clouds. I like to leave clouds soft. Uh, I don't want to add edginess and, and harsh contrast to clouds. So I'm just going to paint that again with that 100% opacity soft brush just out of the clouds. Boom. That way I know I'm not doing anything to mess up my sky. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, uh, like I said, with fall color, I tend to like that desert color adjustment filter. And boom, that adds a whole lot of red saturation and yellow and green, and it did a really nice thing with the sky. I'm going to tone it back just a little tiny bit. Uh, and then I'm going to go into my local adjustments. And as I said, you know, I want, to, I want to drop my exposure about a half a stop, and I want to pull highlights way back. Uh, and I'm not going to brush in at 100% opacity. When I'm dodging and burning like this, I'm just going to be darkening and lightening parts of the image. I want to kind of paint in in multiple passes. So I'm going to drop my opacity to about 20%, make my brush a lot smaller, again, using those bracket keys, make sure I still have a 100% feather. And then I'm just going to kind of paint uh, these brighter parts of the image multiple times. And you'll see if I blow up this mask that as I paint, I'm painting in now. And each time I paint, I, I make that black portion of the mask a little bit grayer, a little more of the effect that I'm painting in is coming through. And because my brush is soft, it's, it's just every brush stroke, you don't see the edges. Now I want to be careful about not going into that blue sky because I don't want to darken that blue sky. I'm just really working on the foliage and the edge of that bridge. And it seems subtle, but if you take a look at what we've just done, it's pretty dramatic right there. It looks much more natural, much more evenly lit with the rest of the scene. I'm going to do the same thing up here the other edge, just in the brighter spots of it. And then I want to add another adjustment layer, local adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm going to change the settings a little bit. I'm going to increase the exposure about a half a stop, and I'm going to increase shadows quite a bit. And what I want to do is make a much bigger brush. And I'm going to come down, and I'm just going to kind of brighten up the bottom part of this image's reflections. And I feel like the rock is really good now. Uh, I might make my brush a little bit smaller and kind of paint around the edge of the rock and get those clouds and that reflection of the clouds and the tree a little bit brighter. Again, it's a soft brush, so it's not going to make that much difference. Um, each, each pass is going to be smoothly blended into the last. And once again, you know, when we take a look at how that changed the image, it brightens it up quite a bit. And when we look at it before, and after, we just made a dramatic image uh, difference to what I thought was a pretty good image to begin with. Um, so, jumping back here, we go back into our brows. You know, I think it just goes to show that, you know, even if you do a really great job capturing your images out in the field, you get all that color that you're after, there's a lot of latitude with our raw files, 
to raw process and adjust in post-production. There's a lot of software out there. I really like Photo Raw 2019 for getting that kind of look and style that I'm after really quickly. It does some other really cool things too, like blending multiple images either into panoramas like this one uh, by clicking this pano button here. You can select a number of images that were photographed for that purpose. You can also blend HDR images in a nice natural looking way or do focus stacking. Uh, you can create virtual copies of images and style them different ways and crop them different ways where you're not creating any new images on your hard drive. They're all pointing back to this one original file. There's just a ton of cool stuff and I, I don't even have time to start delving into it. But when it comes to fall color uh, and I'm working in Photo Raw 2019, I really like that desert uh, color enhancing filter in effects. I like to do a little bit of dodging and burning with the local adjustments, just brightening and darkening bits in, of my images. Uh, and I like to be really careful when I'm working with portraits to not be adding color and contrast effects to skin tones. So some real easy, quick things that you can do there non-destructively on your images. And don't forget to carry that polarizer out in the field. You know, my favorite is the HD3 circular polarizer.